We've mentioned performance measurement already in the F2 syllabus. When we looked at the variances chapter in particular, we said that a manager's performance could be measured against to what extent they had achieved the standard or target costs and revenues set during the budgeting process. In this section, we're going to take a closer look at the things which need to be considered in relation to performance measurement. And we are going to see a number of different tools or techniques which can be used within an organization to ensure the performance measurement system is robust. Before we get into those particular tools and techniques, we're just going to talk a little bit, little bit about a company's mission statement. Now, a company's mission statement is something that's quite high level. What it effectively does is describe the purpose um, or the reason of existence for the organization. So we'll just note down our definition. A mission statement is a statement that describes the basic purpose of what an organization is trying to, to achieve. So, as I said, it's the basic purpose of an organization. Now, the mission statement isn't going to be particularly long. In fact, it shouldn't really be longer than perhaps a paragraph. A mission statement doesn't include detail or financial information, so it wouldn't suggest what the company expects their profits or their growth to be over the next one to three years. It is a very high-level statement. So, for example, a quality airline might have as a mission statement to be the premier airline and first choice for all travellers. It's perhaps a bit brief, but you get the idea. Just a high-level description of the purpose of the organisation. So, why do we have a mission statement? Well, the mission statement is not something we just write and then ignore for until the end of time. The mission statement should be used to then set the objectives of, of the organization, which in turn will trickle down to the different levels of planning within the organization. So, the purposes of our mission statement If you like, the mission statement should form the basis of our strategic planning, So, if we are a premier airline, our strategic planning will include how are we going to ensure our position within the premium airline market over the next number of years. That is going to link in then to our tactical planning. So, this will be our medium term, year on year planning to achieve our strategy or our objectives. That, in turn, will link to our operational planning. So, planning our day-to-day -day activities. So, for example, operational planning, um, ensuring that our service standards in flight are maintained, and all those day-to-day -day things which contribute to ensuring we are a premier airline. So, our mission statement then is linked to the different levels of planning within our organization. Performance measurement then should be looking at how have the different levels of management or staff achieved their objectives 
which should be consistent with our overall mission statement. Before we get into further detail on performance measurement, one important thing to be aware of is the external factors which can influence the performance of a company. Now we need to be aware of these um, external factors because these external factors are things which are outside of management's control. So therefore they may cause, have a negative impact on the company's performance, but really our management and staff should not be penalised for this. So for example, when we looked at our variances, one of the variances we saw was our materials price variance. And we said that the purchasing manager's performance could be measured against achieving our standard cost per unit um, of our materials. But what if inflation in the year is much higher than we expected it to be when we did our budgeting process? If inflation is much higher than expected, that's likely to push the material costs up and make it very, very difficult, if not impossible, for the purchasing manager to achieve the standard cost per unit. So we need to be aware of that then when we're assessing the purchasing manager's performance. So our first external factor then is inflation. Another external factor which may affect company performance is government policies. So perhaps new regulation might restrict our ability to, send, to sell certain products and that may impede the company's growth. Perhaps new health and safety laws may increase the costs for a company and so on. Any laws or regulation the government passes that is going to affect the company may also affect financial performance. A couple of other things, exchange rates. This should be clear enough. If we are a company based in the UK and say we purchase, um, our suppliers are predominantly in the Eurozone. So let's say they're in France. If our suppliers are in a different country like France with a different currency, then any movements in the pound euro exchange rate is going to affect the cost of the goods we are buying from our suppliers. So in that way, just movements in the FX rates affect our costs. <clears throat> Likewise, interest rates may affect our performance. So if, if we have large loans with our bank and so on, and the interest rates go up, then that can have a significant impact on the interest we have to pay on an annual basis. If interest rates go up, our interest payments may, might go up significantly. Of course, it could work the other way. Interest rates might go down, and we may find that our interest payments are much lower than expected.